some opposition to the proposed ban on plastics and styrofoam. A memorial held in honor of a former social worker. And an update on a man who's fighting the dreaded disease, cancer. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. The Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Wolf Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news and environmental town meeting held last evening at the Foster Beepit Siena Center. The Ministry of Environment and Housing hosting the first town meeting outside of New Providence to make Grand Bahamians aware of the ministry's plan to ban single use plastics and styrofoam. Italia Hall was there. The Foster Bee Pistano Center was packed to capacity as residents turned out to learn more about the proposed ban. The Minister of Environment, the Honorable Ramal Ferreira, says that plastics are dangerous to the ocean and threatens the existence of everyone. He says the government can do their part by preventing plastics from entering the ocean. Our government has decided that this is the best course of action and we intend to use a two-prong or bifurcated approach. One, to ban the use of single-use plastics, styrofoam containers, and the like. Two, to privatize the sanitary landfills that are in our country systematically, beginning with the New Providence Sanitary Landfill, which I know many of you live in Grand Bahama, which is the greatest ecological challenge that certainly the island of New Providence faces. Environmental officer Kendria Ferguson says there are four items that will be targeted. Plastic shopping bags, plastic straws, plastic food utensils, styrofoam containers and cups. This is a great way to reduce the presence of litter in our community as well as in our environment. And this is particularly important for us because we rely on tourism greatly for economic growth as well as for just our own enjoyment. Now many of those in attendance were not receptive to the information shared by the environmental officers. They say they want more clarity on the topic before a final decision is made. Among those in attendance were a number of employees from Polymers International Limited, a company in Grand Bahamas Industrial Park that produces and exports the polystyrene beads in the production of styrofoam products. The employees were not satisfied and requested more information as they are concerned that the ban may affect their employment with the company. What has been said to this meeting tonight doesn't make any sense at all because they were not able to answer any of the questions. Um, we understand tonight that they're not banding plastic bottles, which is 50% of the issue that's occurring with the uh, plastic. I'm confused about exactly what it is that they came here for, when basically what they only did was speak to those in Nassau, the businesses in Nassau, our key, and when you come here to Freeport to get our concerns, she cuts me off and doesn't want to listen. It's wise what they did with the town hall meeting, but I feel as if um, the decisions have already been made. It just seems like it's rushed. It seems like the government hasn't, <coughs> hasn't done sufficient research to justify the ban, the products that they are banning. It seems like they haven't, they seems like they're just copying international strategies. The minister responded to the concerns. He says that the ministry wants to implement the ban in a humane way that respects the jobs of Bahamians. That will be taken into consideration. We're not here to take anyone's jobs from them, take bread out of anyone's mouth. So we're very sympathetic to that. That's why we're here. We're here to listen to the concerns of the people so that when we formulate the plan going forward and put this into action, we would have taken into account all the concerns and the jobs will be preserved. Currently, Polymers does not sell any products locally. The ban is expected to be implemented in 2020. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Italia Hall. Thank you, Italia. While well, industrial action could be brewing at a government agency after employees expressed concern about their working conditions. This morning, employees of the Registrar General's Department reported for work but sat outside. They allege that the office has a mold problem. They claim that a number of employees have fallen ill in recent weeks and that today's action was taken out of concern for their health. After sitting outside for an hour, the employees were instructed to return to work. It is 
un understood that as of today, the employees of the Registrar General Department will have reduced work hours, and that's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. until further notice. Now, the Registrar General Department is housed in the Fidelity Financial Center in Freeport. We spoke with the owner's representative, who told us that the department has been leasing the space since 2002, and that based on the contract, the department is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of the air conditioning system, which is suspected to be the source of the alleged mole issue. However, they say to date they are not aware of the department having a service contract with the company that installed the air conditioning system, and adds that if the investigation does link mold to the air conditioning system, the department will have to carry out the mold mitigation work. An, an apparent industrial accident at the Freeport Container Port today has left a man with serious injuries. ZNS News has confirmed that around 2 o'clock this afternoon, a 29-year-old employee was driving a straddle carrier when that carrier clipped over at, flipped over rather at the transshipment terminal. Reports say the young man was taken to hospital by the company's emergency medical vehicle, and at last report, he was being attended to by doctors. His condition is not known at this time and we will continue to follow this story. Well, a service of Thanksgiving and reflection la held last night in honor of former Chief Welfare Officer Patrice Mack. The employee of the Department of Social Services was found dead in her home some three weeks ago. She was the victim of an alleged suicide. There were tears and prayers last evening as her colleagues reflected on a life gone too soon. Romiko Knowles was there. How great is our God? The opening selection by the Department of Social Services praise team resonating in the hearts of friends, family, and loved ones attending the memorial tribute for social worker Patrice Mack. Former colleague administrator Julita Ingram reciting a poem in Mack's honor. It was written by Victoria Coakley entitled Beautiful Butterfly. Fly away, fly away, beloved butterfly. Shine like a star high in the sky. Your exit has left us with much pain in our hearts. To mourn our loss, where do we start? Butterfly, butterfly, your wings have been broken, but you left so many memories as tokens. Your touch so gentle, your smile so bright. Butterfly, to know you was such a delight. Close friend and administrator in the Columbus Houses for Boys and Girls, Elena Williams, sharing memories of the time spent with the beloved butterfly. Ms. Rasma has worked with the Department of Social Services for the past 28 years. She worked in this helping profession that was near and dear to her heart. Ms. Rasma always demonstrated the highest level of professionalism for her co-workers and especially for the clients and anyone with whom she came into contact with. Mrs. Mark loved working with our precious darlings. They had a special place in her heart. A special tribute and presentation made by the Social Service Placement Division to the mother and husband of Patrice Mack. Minister of Social Services and Urban Renewal, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, offering heartfelt condolences to her family. The Social Service Minister prepared a speech, but one standing behind the podium decided to speak from the heart. The true mark of a man or woman is not necessarily how much wealth he or she would have achieved but how many persons he or she would have touched along the way. Listening to the tributes, I'm satisfied. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us, there's more news right after this break.